Hello, is this Jacob? Yeah. Hey, Jacob, it's Sergeant Mitchell with the Fargo Police Department. Hey. How are you doing today? Not too bad. Say, I got a, uh email from uh, our city safety officer. Yep. And um, he's forwarding all those to the chief who in turn forwards them to me. Okay. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, I know we've had discussions in the past. Yep. And what, uh, obviously you have some concerns still at the way this issue was handled. Can you, I don't can, think it was handled at all. Okay. I but, think it was just totally disregard, disregarded. Well, Jacob, the last time we spoke, which was months ago now, I explained why the officers acted the way they did or why they did what they did on the night of the, of the crash. Okay. And I, I think if I recall, there was some disagreement on on what level of injuries you had and I encourage you either to come down and make out a complaint or to give us a copy of your medical release form so we can look at it. Well, I don't think that was ever addressed. I think it was more of I said this, you didn't believe what I said and it was my word against theirs and the way I felt. What, what uh, I guess, I'm trying to replay the, the conversation that we had in the review that I did in my head. I have had a chance to watch the video again. Your, your complaint, as I recall, was that you weren't given medical attention. I wasn't given any. I was never allowed access. Period. Okay, and, and we discussed in our phone call that, that the fact that you didn't make any claims that you were injured. That's, that is totally outline bullshit. Uh, okay. I'm sorry for my language, but... Your office, I mean, we don't, you can rewatch the videotape. None of your officers made an attempt to even contact me. The only person that came up and talked to me seconds after the accident happened and when there was powder still rolling off my airbag was um, one of the bystanders. And in that flight reaction, you're not going to know if you're injured or not. Okay, but then, I mean, you it just, then, that? then they placed you in the squad car, and that's the video I'm referring to. And you've had, okay. you had extensive, extensive conversations with Officer Cruz, who investigated the, the DUI well, here's, portion. Well, here's, here's my problem. Okay. She called, to the, she called to the EMTs, said, how far are you guys out? Then again called and said, let me know before you get here to avoid a head-on collision. Mm -hmm. Okay, she gets into her earpiece or sees the EMT walking up. She gets out of her car, walks up to my vehicle, and her statement was, I have a witness to what her statement was. Who's your witness to that? Um, a friend of mine that I was on the phone with at the exact same time that I have transcripts of from my phone records showing that I was on the phone so you can match up with the camera footage. I, I, okay, go ahead. Um, he's a friend of mine, whatever. But her statement was, off your phone, back in my squad car now. Nothing like, are you hurt? Hey, we're going to get you met. We're in, someone's going to be in almost here. No one took their time to even bother to even check on me. It was, uh, oh, I see the EMT coming, but I'm not going to allow this individual to be looked at. And she took so much time to investigate the wreckage that was done that the police report and the camera footage are totally different. She says that my, I hit him, I hit square, and my vehicle stayed straight, and my airbag didn't go off. Well, I got photographs of the airbag deployment, and the only way my vehicle would go from westbound to northbound and impact was if I diverted. And it spun completely all the way around. Okay. I got knocked out from my airbag. I don't remember absolutely anything from that day. It's all blotchy. Okay. And I did have a concussion, and I have documents. I can get you that. Okay. There's no problem with that. But Jacob, here, here's here. I all I can tell you is what the officer said and what I can speak from my experience. When I come to a crash scene, if somebody's walking around their vehicle on the telephone, and they have no visible signs of any injury. Um, a lot of a lot of times. Your okay, let me, okay, let me okay. finish. A lot of times, the officers will take for granted that that person is not injured if they're walking around coherent, have no visible signs of any injury. 
Okay, I'm just um, saying that that, the officers that likely... did not. The officers did not witness me walking around. The only person that witnessed me was this bystander. I got out, grabbed my headlights, tossed them back in my vehicle, and sat in my vehicle waiting for people to get there. Okay, but you just I mean, said a minute ago that, that the officer told you when you were walking on, around on the phone with your friend to get off I the was phone never get... walking around on the phone. I was sitting in my vehicle waiting okay. to be treated by an EMT. It's right on the video tape. I was sitting in my vehicle waiting to be treated, waiting to be looked at, and it was off your phone back in my car now. Okay, well, it was. when you were back in the car... Um, the squad car, did you tell Officer Cruz that you were injured? I have, n I have no intention. Why, why would I do that? How would I know if I had a head injury? You tell me that. Have you ever had a concussion? Yes, I have. Have you ever been knocked out? Yes. Okay. So how would you tell me how you're supposed to know if you're injured or not? You so, don't. So you weren't feeling any, any signs of any injury? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember I making do a phone remember call? Anything. Do you remember making a phone call to your father from inside the squad car? Um, vaguely. Okay. I'm locked out. All right. Well, Jacob, here, here's here's the here's the the situation from the perspective of Officer Cruz from my discussions with her. She arrived. You had no visible injuries. She you, took. Let me how finish. Many second, how, many, how many seconds did she take to look at me? She was in the, um, she in the back of her squad car for a long period of time. She, she can't even see an airbag deployment, but she is that quick enough to make that assumption? Give me a fucking break. That's bullshit. You were in the back of the squad car, Jacob, for a long period of time? Is that, yeah, is that because fair? I was told to exit the vehicle. Okay. And did she perform some, some tests on you, some field sobriety tests? I can, I'm assuming she did. But how is, are your officers trained to determine if somebody has a head injury or not? She actually is a drug recognition evaluator. Okay, expert. that's a drug recognition. Is she, does she know what a concussion is? Does she know how to determine if a person has a concussion or not? Yes, she does, because we are trained as drug recognition experts to examine the pupil size. And typically when someone has a head injury, their pupil size will be off. Okay? Also, we'll, we'll base a lot of the person's actions when we're, when we're assessing their condition. Okay, if she explained a test to you and you understood and performed the test as directed, there's a good likelihood that she's gonna make that assumption that you're not injured, all right? We've all seen football games where the coach or whoever will hold up fingers and the person has no idea what they're looking at. That's a good clue that somebody has a significant uh, concussion or head injury. She didn't see that with you and that's why that, that and a bunch of other things formulated her opinion that you weren't Suffering from any injuries. Okay. okay but I documentation proven her wrong. Okay. So, and and then she transported whatever. you to the to the emergency room for a blood test? Yep. Okay, did you tell the doctor at all that you had any There was injuries? no doctor there, sir. Or the nursing staff or any medical personnel that why, you saw? why would I why would I do that when your officers already violated what was supposed to be done? Yeah. What, I, I guess I, what, what I tried to explain to you last time, Jacob, is I don't understand what the officers violated. They made an assessment based on the evidence on the scene that you weren't injured. And there, there's no violation well, of, of anything. If, 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 you're, if you're making a claim that you had a visible injury and out of spite or disdain for you, they, they denied you medical attention, uh, to me that, that's, that's not a valid complaint because I see the video and I see the discussions going on. And from my viewing the video and listening to you talk and have phone calls with your father, there's no indication to me that you're incoherent or that you're injured. I, I well, that's your, that's your opinion. You're not an MD. And you're right. I'm, I'm certainly not an MD. But, but it's tough for us on a crash scene if the person doesn't relay to us that they have some type of injury. It's um, when did... Oh, oh, this is not, um, here's my thing. Okay. She went out of her way. She sat in her vehicle, called the EMTs once, not once, but twice. Knew they were almost on scene. Prior to that, she never exited her vehicle to come talk to me at all. She waited until they were almost there. The EMT was within five feet, was going to come to talk to me. But she went out of her way to open the vehicle. No questions asked. Out of your car, back in my squad car now, was her statement. And 
I did as ordered. I was following orders. I was scared shitless. I knew I was going to jail because they had to cover up what had happened out at that scene in an accident. What, what do you mean cover up? I guess I don't understand where the cover up is. What, what were they trying to cover up? Um, Benjamin's actions of not properly securing an accident scene. Okay. What, 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 what is your... Can, what is I, your I, can you, you tell me... Can you tell you me the transcripts for that reckless driving charge that's in court and I, that I won? He admits he can only see as far as his hood through that location, but yet he gets dispatched out there, and then five, ten minutes later, it's safe for me to park here in the middle of a whiteout. How much sense does that make? Well, where would you recommend that an officer park when he's assisting motorists? That um, on crash? top of the bridge to close down the road of traffic to figure out where the vehicle was, because this price log says... Vehicle stuck west of Drain, middle of westbound lane. How, how far away from, were they from the top of the bridge? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I never saw that vehicle. So, so the only vehicle your... I saw was a black hatch and smoke coming off my airbag is what I came to. So what, what, you're, I got knocked out. what you're saying that would have been an appropriate response would have been the officer to park potentially... To close down the lane, to close down the lane completely and not let any other westbound lane traffic come through before he determined where that vehicle was at. So you're, you're suggesting then that the officer park potentially blocks away from a crash scene and, and no. block the road and then walk there in a, in a blizzard to assess okay, the... Okay, here's, here's... There's a raised concrete raised median out in that location on top of that bridge. If a vehicle is parked on middle of the only westbound lane, no vehicles are going to go around that lane, around that vehicle. No one's going to go around the vehicle because they'd be going in oncoming traffic. But, but you're, you're, you're suggesting, Jacob, that, that the officer park in a location that is a significant Visible distance. Visible to oncoming that, traffic. That is a significant distance away and then walk a, a significant distance in a blizzard to check on a crash scene for, for injur injuries and victims. Okay, that, that, whatever. Okay. That's the best, that was the best location at that time, he knew that was the best location at the time where he'd be most visible to traffic coming up behind him. Okay, so that's where, the, that's where in, in your assessment, there was a cover-up that was taking place? No, the cover-up was after the accident happened. They had no interest in allowing me medical treatment. Okay. Plain and simple. He asked for just twice where the hell they were. You, you, and instead of allowing the EMT to look and assess everybody, no, out of your vehicle right now. What, what test did she give you? Couldn't tell you. Don't remember. Okay. All I remember was um, my SD2 and SD5 were not working. Um, I didn't, she didn't say what the results were ever were. Um, then it was um, pass this field sobriety test, then you can go home. And then we're arresting you for DUI because we just, so we don't, because we, you might have an injury, but well, we don't give a shit. I, I don't believe Officer Cruz ever alluded to the fact that she thought you had an injury. Yeah. In fact, she said. She's, she's, not, she's not trained. She's not an EMT. She doesn't know their proper procedures. Okay, so, so she did say to you, we're going to arrest you. I'm not sure if you have an injury. She never said that because she didn't make that comment. She, she didn't believe well, you had oh, an injury. Okay, well, Here's my, here's my issue is that, okay, this vehicle, 4,000 pound vehicle and a 35 pound, 100 pound vehicle went from, say, 25 to absolutely zero, spun northbound, airbag deployment, but we don't write that down in the police report because we don't, we don't inspect that. Okay, if that wasn't written in the police report. Yeah, and, that wasn't okay. written in the police report because she didn't see and she didn't look for it. I, I'm not sure that she took the crash report, Jacob. I'll have to review it, but he, typically the, the officer or the person that takes an officer-involved crash report is a sergeant, but I'll have to double-check. So the, the issue was... Okay, uh, and then if that was helmet then, he looked in my, he went inside my vehicle. Okay. He went inside my vehicle to get my insurance information that was in the glove compartment. He proceeds to search the center console of my vehicle and... Within reaching distance, it's a steering wheel. Airbag didn't deploy. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that it, that the airbag didn't deploy, Jacob. If if there's, I mean, I, if I'm there's, saying the police report says my airbag didn't deploy, okay. and I got pictures 
If, if the uh, airbag did not deploy and it's not in the did. police report, then that's, that's an error in the police report. Okay, well, and that's an error in the police report, then. Okay, then that's something we can, we can uh, clarify in the police report. Okay. I, I don't, uh, I can tell you from my previous experience um, that the severity of the vehicles involved in a crash isn't always a good indication of injuries to the occupants. Okay. So then why would we move somebody if we don't know the severity of injury to the occupants? Jacob, we take little... Why would we move somebody? Okay, can I explain it to you? We, sure. We take, Let's hear your reasoning. We take literally hundreds of police reports or at crash reports a week. Okay? And if we told everybody in a crash not to get out of their vehicle, that, that, would, that would be something that would be unreasonable because a lot of our uh, crashes are uh, relatively minor, even severe ones. I've seen people that have rolled vehicles and cr crushed them beyond recognition that walk out and have absolutely no injuries. So the severity, well, then of the, that's, the, that's a lucky percentage. The severity of the crash or the 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 visual um, damage to the vehicle is not always an indication of severity. We don't base whether or not somebody's injured on what their vehicle looks like. Okay, so how okay. much time How much time did she take inspecting my vehicle to determine damage? I, I'm not, like, I, like I said, I don't, I'm not certain that she took the crash report. I believe that a sergeant took that report. Okay, but she's the one that took the action to remove me from my vehicle. And, and I tried to explain, Jacob, when somebody comes, an officer comes on a scene, if the person doesn't have any visible injuries, doesn't make any claims to have injuries, is on the telephone at the time, an officer sometimes will make an assumption that that person is not injured, okay, and ask you to get out of the vehicle. If she would have done that and you just said, I'm hurt, and she said, tough, get out of the vehicle, that would have been a problem. There was no indication from your physical appearance you're, you're, you're coherent, you're on the telephone. There's no indication to Officer Cruz that you were injured as a result of that crash. Now, like I said, if you would have said, hey, I'm injured, I need to see somebody, or someone needs to see me. <laughs> That's okay. So, so what you're suggesting then is every time an officer goes on a crash scene, we order them the to remain in the vehicle. The does not move that person until that person is medically cleared or is at least treated by somebody that is professional enough to know what they need to do with this certain type of vehicle damage and yeah, it should have been allowed to be looked at by an EMT. So you're suggesting that every accident we have, we should... We no, should. I'm not saying every accident. I'm saying every accident with damage of fuck, damage of that extent, with the, that extent of the damage was. So it, we so we should base our assessment on injuries not on the physical appearance of the person but on the amount of damage to the vehicle. Yeah. Okay. All right. What what uh, what is your intention in emailing uh, the city uh, safety because officer? Because you because I have every right to email whoever I want to. Well, I know, but there the, he's for him to me, and so it's obviously back coming back to me. So I, I, you know, I need I need to know: Are you going to file a personnel complaint, like I suggested last time? Are you going to provide me? I thought I, already, I thought I already did that when I wrote you all those emails. Do I have to physically sit down and write complaints? Do we have a complaint process? Yes. I have your emails. I thought that would be the complaint process. I thought, do I have to write everything out I, and I, written I, and submit I, paperwork? I, and I'm trying to explain to you, Jacob, that based on what you've told me, I, there there is nothing that I can see that the officer did that would that would substantiate a complaint. Okay. Uh, now, if the complaint is that the report is inaccurate, uh, due you know due to the airbag not being mentioned as deploying, uh, you know that's that's something we can look into. Okay. Well, there. Everybody didn't deploy in the police report. Okay. Um, my vehicle apparently stayed westbound, but yet I was able to turn the vehicle northwest, and my vehicle stayed completely straight. Um, we don't know how much how how much farther Officer Benjamin backed up in oncoming traffic when he knew there was a complete whiteout there. Okay. I'm, never... I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you that an, an officer's determination on where to position his squad car um, during an accident. Uh, or when he's investigating an accident, there's a lot of latitude that we give him. And I'm going to tell you right now that where he determined to position his car is not going to be a policy violation. Okay. So we can park, we can create blind barricade in the middle of the road. Now that oncoming traffic, no, we're there. 
he, where, where the officer positions his squad car when he's investigating a crash uh, it gives given a lot of latitude if you if you think he parked there um, improperly and and that caused the accident you want to file a civil suit um, claiming the officer was negligent on where they determined to park it that, that's entirely up to you what I'm telling you is that it's not a policy violation where officer Benjamin chose to, to park the car okay. okay but the thing is, is that all I'm saying is that we know it's complete white out right on the other side of this drain because I can only see as far as my hood. And that's, I got transcripts. I can get transcripts of that. He was on the stand when he said that. Never made sure his lights were visible to oncoming traffic that was coming up behind him. How, how would he have ensured that? What's he, that? He had his, his, his lights on. His emergency lights were on. Yeah, he never made sure his lights were visible to oncoming traffic up, going up behind him. But his emergency lights were on to my understanding of the report and my discussions. Well, that, that doesn't matter. It could be completely white out, and I can't see as far as my face, but how am I supposed to see the lights? Okay. You know, the, the thing about it, Jake, I mean, the, been, thing, the not... thing about it is that I am testifying saying that he never made sure his lights were visible to oncoming traffic. He proceeded to back up in oncoming traffic again for the second time, for the first time at least. Um, never made sure his lights were visible again had a bystander statement saying that he didn't see squad car until he was going, he was going eastbound. That's the only time he knew where the squad car was when he proceeded to go back westbound again. So he had an idea where the officer was. And then he, after Zach Strand got to the scene, Benjamin took, pulled him to park in front of him to the west, not behind him. And I'd, I'd either call for backup or I would tell that individual to park behind me, let oncoming traffic know that we're parked here. I guess I guess I say differently than you do. Um, it's just common sense thing here. Um, I just don't understand why I get told to exit my vehicle when Benjamin is allowed complete access to an EMT, loaded up and taken to the hospital, and I get nothing. Can, can I, I can probably explain why that is. Okay, Officer Benjamin was injured to a point where I, I believe he was backboarded and transported to a medical facility. That, that's, that's procedure. That is the procedure that the EMTs had to have t and should have taken on both of us. Okay, but the reason, and I spoke with Ken Krupich from FM Ambulance, who's their supervisor, and he talked to the EMTs that were involved, and the reason that Officer Benjamin was, was backboarded and transported to the hospital was as a result of his claim that he was injured. He, he also had visible signs of, of being injured that, that led them to make that assessment. Well, see, that's the thing here. Um, they were allowed to at least look at him. No, the EMT was never allowed to look at me. The crews got out of her vehicle prior to the EMT. The EMT saw me walk away. Okay. And... Kept on walking. It's on the videotape. Okay. So but the only thing I can really do, because we're not getting anywhere and you're not helping me out. and uh, I'm trying to understand I'm, what I'm you're just, I'm just going to file a claim to damages, see what the city does, okay. and then I'll file a lawsuit. Okay. If it has to go that way, it'll go that way. Okay. I, I understand that, and I, 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 can't, uh, I can't tell you anything that I didn't tell you last time as far as uh, the complaint. I, the only thing that I can tell you that I would investigate a complaint would be the accuracy of the crash report, and typically those are nothing that lead to a personal complaint but an edit to the report. And if, in fact, your airbag did deploy, I can get that report edited. I thought I, thought I said to you photographs too, didn't I? Yes, I got photographs. Okay, photograph of the airbag deployed. So there you go. Well, I don't. I'm not disputing the fact that the airbag. No, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just saying it should have been done in the first place. And, and I. And if it's not, uh, if it's not indicated that the airbag deployed, we can get that that edit made. Okay, but um, here's the other thing: is that I guess when it comes down to it, when I do file paperwork for the, sue the city of Fargo for lack of training or whatever I determined to write. Um, Fargo, um, it was 
neighbor of mine is an invest doctor for an invest ER doctor. I showed him one photo of my vehicle. He said, "He goes, you're lucky you're not, you're lucky you're not a cripple." Is what he, the way he worded it. So I just don't understand if police officers are trained to med- be or medical responders, or if they're just re- trained to do criminal investigations, or what they're trained to do. But there's a little, there's a little indifference that happened, I guess, the way I see it. Okay. First, then, like I tried to explain to you earlier, for someone to make an assessment on somebody's injuries or potential injuries based on uh, a photograph of a crash, that that's not a good indication. Like I've tried to tell you, I've seen vehicles that were crushed and rolled over, and there was no no injuries whatsoever to the to the occupants. So to base an assessment that you should be crippled off the damage to a vehicle it doesn't have a lot of doesn't have a lot of validity. I mean, you can't do that. I've seen I've seen relatively minor crashes where people have suffered severe neck injuries as a result, and then I've seen rollover crashes where the person walks away without any injury. So that's not a good indication. You can't look at a photo and, and equate that to injury. It just can't. It doesn't happen. What I'm trying to explain to you through our conversation is the officer based the decision off of your level of coherence, the fact that there was no claim uh, of any injuries, you have no physical sign of any injuries. And, and your your actions on that day, and, and you're making phone calls uh, or on the phone with your friend and then make a phone call to your father. And, uh, you know, that's what she based that on in her examination uh, when she did the HGN and looked at your eyes. Okay? That's what she made her assessment on is what I'm trying to explain to you. And, okay. that, and, that, and you know, and I can't, I wasn't there. All I can tell you is what she saw and what I saw in the video. And, uh, you know, I was able to listen to the videotape in reference to the conversation you had with your father and there really wasn't any indication watching that video now granted i'm not there i'm just watching a video but you know your speech wasn't impacted by any injuries you, you seemed coherent your police report says it was well she equated that to slurred speech from intoxication okay your your, your discussion with your father and i don't remember exactly what it was but you were discussing um some of the testing process that were upcoming and, and that you hadn't drank since last night and stuff like that. That, to me, when I'm listening to it, sounds like somebody that has a good recollection of the previous night, and I'm not seeing any signs just from that alone of a significant head injury or concussion. Now, like I said, I wasn't there, so I didn't get a real good assessment of you. I only can base it on what I was looking at. But it, was, it would be hard for me to say that that person has a has a medical injury or a medical concern based on what I saw. Okay, but okay. like I said before, I went in, I was diagnosed with a head injury. I received MRIs, I received CAT scans. Um, I was dizzy, I was vomiting. Um, uh, the whole day was blotchy. Um, I don't remember being at Cass County Jail. Um, at Innovis, I don't really remember either. Not hardly any of it. No, um, all you, I remember that's that's what I remember. When you got booked into the jail, did they ask you if you were injured or hurt or on medication or anything like that? Don't believe so. Okay. Um, please, the booking form says that um, that Cruz filled out says that um, she didn't know if I was injured or not. She, she wasn't in a physical altercation or accident. It was in a crash, though, and she didn't fill out Medicare. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm I'll, I'll have form. to get the booking form because the jail staff asked everybody if they're currently on any medication, if they have any physical injuries, anything like that. So the, there should be a form that documents that, that the jail staff. Yeah, I, I have that. Okay. It, does it say that there's an injury on that form? Mm, no, I said it was with a crash, but... Um, I don't believe, no, there wasn't, because I didn't receive any treatment okay. prior to getting to the jail, or at the jail, so. Yeah, you know, and another thing, you know, I'm not trying to, to tip the scale one way or another on this, um, but when the medical staff intakes a person, they also do a physical, I mean, they don't have a doctor come in and do a physical exam, but they make an assessment on somebody's condition, okay? Now, if you yeah, I don't remember that. 
well, if you don't went in there and, and you were obviously in, you know incoherent or or you know s s dizzy to a point where you were unstable, that would be something that they would would key on to, and they would likely order a medical evaluation. So it's you know based on based on the fact that they did, that they did not it's likely that they weren't able to see that you had a, a concussion or a head injury during the intake process. Okay. So I I, uh, I don't know what else to tell you, uh, Jacob. I will do some checking on the police report, and if there's some uh, corrections that need to be made to the accident, I will ensure that those are made. And um, other than that, um, you know, if you want to, bring down the the medical documentation about your concussion i'd be more than happy to add that to the inquiry file that i started on this incident okay okay i just don't understand how how this even happened to be honest with you i don't i i guess i don't know what portion you're talking about if you're talking about the crash itself the whole thing in general you know it was just a weird, a whole fuck, and just. Yeah, I, I guess. Tell you how the I guess crash the thing happened. is that the next person threw it up at him. I guess that's all I can say. I can really tell you. What's that? I guess the only. I guess the next person threw it would have had that similar, had the same accident. I guess is all I can really. Well, it, I can really say. I can. I can tell you, Jacob. I've been here 20 years, and my experiences in blizzards. It. It. It's very difficult for an officer to work a crash scene because you just don't know who's coming over the road. Yeah, you don't. I mean, and it, and it's unfortunate, and it was whiteout conditions. Nobody can test the fact that there were whiteout conditions at the time. And I, I just, I, I just, I just don't understand. Is like what got reported um, to the media and all that shit. I mean, that really was frustrating too. Um, like, like in Helmick's report that I sent to you. I mean. To go off and say that, that takes a lot of balls. Well, you know, I, I can't speak for Sergeant Helmick, but I can tell you how the media works, and, and they will latch on to stories um, that they think are newsworthy, and, you know, it's it's not unfortunate, but, but we're mandating. But they actually, they actually quoted him as saying that statement. I guess I'll have to watch it again. I, I You know, they they do report somebody was arrested for drunk driving. There's no doubt well, about that. Well, there's that one, and then there was, like, the forum article saying, I think the statement was, it's bad enough we have people driving this weather, let alone drunk drivers driving this weather. It took a lot of people away from other people that probably needed help at the time. That's basically what it boiled down to. That was in the forum Tuesday, January 26th, front page. You can call them and inquire about it get a copy of it, it's, it was there. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not going to speak on behalf of Sergeant Helmick. I, but he's representing the force when he made that statement. I, you I, see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I understand that, and I understand how that would be frustrating, especially um, I, I don't know the status of the case. I, 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 I think I know that the, that the charges were amended at one point from DUI to reckless driving. No, I think it was DUI was dismissed. After blood results came back, then they recharged the same day reckless driving after I paid a care required ticket on the scene. I had a forfeiting because um, Officer Cruz never wrote the court date on it. I figured everything would be together. So I ended up forfeiting on the care required ticket and then ended up getting a reckless driving done. ticket shoved down my throat or tried to shove down my throat. And I went to court and didn't have to show the videotape, didn't have to do anything. You just have to say, like, well, what was there on the transcript? So I can get a copy for you for it if you want. I mean, it's going to cost a little bit of money, but... No, I don't, I don't need a, a copy of the transcripts. I, I, but my, my point uh, in bringing this up, Jacob, is I understand that you were involved in a crash, and there are a lot of circumstances that that happened that led up to the crash, whether it was not being able to see the lights, you know, your your belief that he should have been further away from the crash scene. I mean, there's a lot of elements that fit in there. I, I understand that you're arrested for DUI and the charges were um, dismissed by the city attorney. And I understand that the media ran with a story that ultimately 
was dismissed. And I and I can I mean from from your perspective, your point of view, I can understand how that how that, that must feel to be on the news that you um, were in this DUI crash and then it gets dismissed. I mean that you know I can understand where where you would have you know ill feelings or you'd be upset over that. There's no doubt in my mind that that would upset me if I was in your position. Well, the thing that really upsets me, the accident happened, I can move from that, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, people make mistakes, I can understand that. But to allow EMTs to look at somebody, well, one in the, well, the EMTs look at one person, and no one prior to Officer Cruz had, any, from, your, from the law enforcement agency, had any interaction or even came to talk to me. The only person that did was that Zach Strand, I believe it was him, I, the, only person, the only person I remember, I don't remember the person's face, I just remember like some clothing, and the only reason I remember, I remember a little bit of that, but then my insurance adjuster I was talking to said that somebody came up, ran up, and talked to you, but that's when I had just, Literally, I was just coming to, and there's powder still rolling up the airbag after I had been knocked out. Yeah, I, I can't. That, I, that, I, no, I'm, I'm just letting you know that's no. what that's what happened. Okay. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I wasn't there, and all I can do is is base it off what the officers tell me that happened and watching the video. Okay. Okay. And and you know, if you were injured as a result of that crash. Um, you know that that's never a good thing to to suffer an injury, um, but the, the misconduct that you're alleging of the officers, I, I don't see misconduct in what they did that day. I'm just trying to I'm trying to be honest with you. I I see them responding to a crash, having someone that they determine to be coherent, someone that has no physical injuries at all. Um, they do an eye exam. They don't see Let anything. Me, I'm just, hey, Sergeant Mitchell, can I ask you something? Sure. How? Would they determine within, from when she opened my door to say, get off your phone, back my squad car, how would she determine any physical injuries? Can you explain that to me? Because I don't really quite follow how that could have been done within 15 seconds. And, and I can't speak on behalf of Sergeant, or Officer Cruz. I can only tell you if I was in her position, or I would make a visual assessment of the person, and if there was no injuries and I, in my in my communication with them, they understood what I'm saying. They're on the telephone, seated in their vehicle. Those things, Jacob, would lead me to believe that the person wasn't injured. Now, if I asked them to get out of the car and they said I'm hurt, th then obviously a huge red flag comes up. But if I asked them to get out of their car and they do, and then I get a chance to watch them walk to my squad car, and I have time to sit with them in a squad car for uh, an extended period of time and, and talk to them and, and listen to them make phone calls on their cell phone from within my squad car. All those things would lead, lead me to believe that you weren't significantly injured or injured as a result of the crash. Okay. I'm, that's, that's, that's just, you know, I, I've taken hundreds of crash reports, and sometimes I miss cues. Sometimes I don't see that somebody is suffering from some pain or of an injury. And they typically will say, hey, I hit my head, I'm hurt, you know, my arm, my shoulder hurts, whatever. And at that point, we put the brakes on, and we don't get them out of the car. See, I think what was going on is that, I had, obviously, like I said before, I got knocked out. Adrenaline was flowing through my system. I was scared because I obviously there's a freaking squad car parked in the middle of the road and I just hit it, you know. And then I get all these. I don't. I don't. It was just basically I was scared. Adrenaline was running through my system. I guess that's all I can really maybe tell you, mm -hmm. you know. Um, in that refusal of care, I sent. I believe I sent you a copy of that. It it goes into detail like if they believe this is going on or they believe this is going on. Like I think I highlighted, it said like if they believe the person is intoxicated or under influence or something, something to that nature, this person can or sign this piece of paper, and we have to take them in no matter what. But I never got that piece of paper. And there's no documentation from our our ambulance of me. But I guess I don't know. I guess in my the way I'm coming at it is that I just don't understand how. I just don't understand how it came to what it came to. 
I ended up sitting, I ended up, from when the accident happened to when I got bailed out of county, was six and a half hours. Okay. So just giving you an idea of the timetable and stuff, and I, gave, I submitted like a timetable of when the dispatch logs show it from this location to this location to this location. So, I mean, there wasn't much time there for physicals or anything of that nature, I guess. I guess I was basically in the custody of Officer Cruz once I exited the vehicle to when I got booked in the county. And that's the way the hospital, I've talked to them too, and that's the way they're going, that's what they're alleging, or that's the way they're stating it, you know? Because there's no documentation from any of us either on me even being there. The only thing they have was some old dated proceedings and when a person gets brought into the hospital, I guess, for their end, what I told is that if it's for drug related or driving under the influence or something like that, you're in police custody the whole time and we don't take custody's never transferred from the hospital to the from away from the officers. Mm-hmm. Is what I've been told, yeah. the way I've been going through it up to this point. Did you did you make any phone calls from the county? Um I don't know, I think maybe one or two. Okay. I believe. I don't know, it was just the whole day was watchy to be honest with you. Maybe it was because of the shock or the trauma or mix of everything, I guess. I mean, I don't really remember much. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll have to call over there as well and see, you know, and, and try to get a copy of that uh, intake sheet. I don't have a copy of that. Okay. Um, and, and see if they noted anything as far as your, your injuries or physical condition. Okay. All right. All right. Yes, I thought the, the arresting officer filled out also paperwork when they're booking somebody in too. Why don't they do that? Not not pertaining to their medical condition, no. That's that's taken from the by the jail staff. Um, okay. and the reason for that is it kind of gives an independent overview of the person's uh, medical, you know, appearance when they come in. Okay. Kind of a safe. Um, another question I really um, have too is, wouldn't if one department gets to an accident? Department of Vehicle in an accident, say, for example, like it was Fargo PD or County or State Patrol, wouldn't it be a little bit less conflict of interest or to have a different um, department handle that crash report? I'm just curious. Uh, the answer, if it's a significant, we don't investigate, we, we don't have, we've never had a fatal crash involving an officer when um, that's been on duty here. Uh, if we did that, certainly we would have someone else come and reconstruct the crash. Um, but we have officers involved in crashes numerous times throughout the year, and, and to answer your question, no, we don't. We have a, our procedure calls for a supervisor to come out and take the crash report. Okay. So that's why that's why Sergeant uh, um, Helmet came out and, and uh, took that crash report. All right. You just saw my video too on that WDAY post. He was just like he was smiling and just it was it seemed like it was just everything was fine. Dang, you know. I don't know. It's just upsetting the way things proceeded. I guess things probably could have been done quite a bit different after that's hindsight I guess I mean I believe it should have been done a certain way and I guess I'm, I'm the victim here you know so hey right, Jacob if you want to drop that off uh, at medical so we know the, the extent of your injuries I know that okay. uh, anybody would and I forget the name of the person over at the safety office that you've been contacting I know someone eventually from the city is going to have to see that and and uh Either you can bring it to me and I could forward it to him or you could forward it to him and he will uh, get it. Do you it. want um, documentation of the concussion? I understand you want that. Do you want um, what else was done that day when I went in? Like the MRIs, knowing that the MRI was done, knowing that a CAT scan was done, any of that? 
Yeah, I would like to see what they what they did and everything that they concluded. What day did you go in? So Wednesday or Thursday, I believe. Because my parents assumed that I got looked at, and then Tuesday, um, I started getting sick. That was more. I didn't, they thought it might have been because of drama, you know, stress and all that stuff going on, but it ended up being because of the head injury that I received, so. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see your medical stuff, anything that you'll, uh, that you had done. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have right. my, my number there, or you can send it to, uh, um, and I, I can't remember his name right now. Luke. Yeah, you can send it to him, or you can send it to me. Either way, I'm sure I'll get a hold of it. Okay. All right, Jacob. Yep. Talk to you later. Yep, bye.